In this video, we are tackling one of the most under, or maybe the absolute mostly underappreciated CSS unit. You're always hearing about things like M's and REMs, and I love those so much. But this unit, this one, it just, it makes typography so much easier and people just never use it. Let's go see what it is. Hi there and welcome to this video. My name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks and tutorials. And just in case you don't know, I do come from a design background and part of that design background, one of my favorite things with design is typography. Absolutely in love with typography. And I guess one of the reasons I love this unit is it does have a strong link with type, a little bit like M's and REM's, but we're going to see that it's even more specific in a certain way. So uh, here we have VS Code open and I have a little sample site that I have thrown together here. Nothing too fancy, but if I do make this bigger, uh, we can see that you know it grows and shrinks a little bit. We're gonna play around with that a little bit um, as we are working on this. But one of the things I see, one of the mistakes that I see developers make the most often is they actually allow things to be able to get too long. Um, and actually, let's, let's go full screen on this for a second. Um, and let's turn off, let's go to my index and turn off my aside for a second here, my little author box that I have. Um, and you get these texts, people let text just stretch all the way across the page. And at one point you reach a limit where it's too long. And anyone who comes from a typography background will know there is an ideal unit count. There's an ideal amount of units that's easiest to read because what happens is as you're reading along on a page, you can actually get lost where your eye has to track all the way back and you can get lost on the way back there. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. It also makes your text look heavy. It doesn't make it inviting to read. If you have shorter lines of text, it's more inviting to read. You know, you don't want to go too short either. So there is a middle ground in here. Um, and what that middle ground is, is around, I'm going to say 45 to 75 characters and preferably somewhere in, you know, the 55 to 65 range would probably be ideal. You might go, well, and we have M's and REM's, but they don't really let us do that. So that's where this other unit does come into play. Um, so if I go over to my CSS and this whole thing here, well, right now it's actually, we can do it right here where I have my article. Um, what I could do on this article is give it a max width. And this is what you'd usually see, M's or REM's, right? So at one point it's going to, or even pixels, it just stops growing when it reaches a maximum size, which we're not hitting apparently. Let's zoom out a little bit. Maybe I, I'm too far in, but we should see uh, at one point, there you go. You can see that it's locking in at a certain size. Um, and we, we want that to happen ideally, but this is kind of long. So instead of going with M's, REM's, or even pixels, a unit that we can use is the CH unit. So C8, I, I guess it stands for character, um, but it uses the width of the zero character. So if you find a zero in your text, technically it should be following the width of one of those. So if I save that, we should see that uh, at 60 CH, it maxes out there. Now I'm zoomed out, so I'm wondering if that is playing with it a little bit. Um, you can see actually it did. There we go. So we can see that it is maxing out right around there. And that to me is still a really long line. And I'm telling you now, <laughs> just like with a, any typography, there's a reason we give a range. It really depends on the font. In my opinion, that's getting kind of big. So let's try 40 CH and see what happens. And maybe now that's too narrow, but you can see it's actually maxed that in there. If we go to mobile view, which apparently is gigantic right now, we shrink that down. It's still gonna, I'm setting it as a max width. So it still lets me max out, but then it grows a bit and we can see it's locking in. And in a more realistic scenario, you probably don't have something simple like this. So let's turn this off. Um, or actually, maybe we'll go back to what I had before, which was about 75 RAM, or we'll do 65, or we'll do 70, it's fine. Um, and let's turn off my mobile view for a second. And let's go to here and turn my aside on. So what you might get is something like this that looks fantastic at this size of screen. Uh, but then as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, at one point, um, I find these lines personally are getting a little bit too long. So I think what most people will do in this situation is that they're going to come in and they're going to put a maximum on the main content. If we look here, actually, let's just shrink this down. I have my article, which has everything. I have the main content, which is on the left here, and then I have my sidebar on the right. So what people do is they'll set a maximum width on this to prevent this whole area from getting too big. Not the worst idea, um, but just to show you, there is another way we could approach that. But just to give you an idea of why maybe that's not the best option. I don't have anything. Let's just come down to here then. 
main content, I'm gonna make it too small, uh, max width of 40 CH, which is probably gonna be tiny in this case. Let's see. I'm gonna make that bigger. Oh, we'll go even smaller than that, maybe 30. Just so I wanna show you what's gonna happen is, well, right now we get this problem where my sidebar is now expanding because I use Flexbox. And there's ways of preventing that from happening, but that's really awkward. Um, and then I'd have to write more CSS for that. I don't really wanna do that. Um, it also means that my image gets limited to that width as well, and that can sort of stink. Um, so instead of limiting your main content, uh, what you could do is you could come in and you could limit just the paragraphs inside your main content. So the advantage of doing something like that is now, while my paragraphs will be limited, and this is an exaggeration, these lines are way too short now in my opinion, is as this gets bigger, you can see the this air, like my image is actually stretching out and I get to keep my really big image, but I'm limiting the total lines of most of my paragraphs here. So that could be handy. You don't have to include your H1s, anything like that. So you have a nice big title that goes all the way across still. Uh, now, obviously this looks super awkward because it looks like I have a third empty column, which I don't want to do. Um, but you get the idea that you can sort of play around with this a little bit. And in this case, I think something like 45 would probably be best. And even that's kind of small. What if we did that up to 50? There we go. So that's starting to look like a pretty good width and it locks in at one point. And then something like that where I get these nice big images but my lines of text are a little bit shorter. It even gives it a bit, it breaks up the momentum of everything going on here a little bit and is pretty enjoyable. And the nice thing with this is, and I'd probably encourage you to start around 60 as sort of a baseline if you do decide to use CH. Um, I do think it is a nice place to start. Most fonts it'll work pretty good, but you can always adjust based on your layout from there. Now, this isn't a unit we use all the time, but it is something that could actually be really, really useful. You could also use it as a percentage in certain cases, if you had a two column layout, you don't have to do it on the paragraphs. You could do it for your sidebar and your main and you still know like how things are adding up in there. I would definitely use it as a max width and not just as a straight up width because there are issues uh, when you're using max widths, I think that you might know about and you might have run into because if you just set solid widths, that's when you run into responsive issues. And if you're not too comfortable with responsiveness, when do I use a width? When do I use a max width? Uh, even M's and REMs and CSS units, they kind of confuse you a little bit. When do I use percentages? When should I just use a fixed value? These are the types of questions you are currently having. I do have a free course. It's called Conquering Responsive Layouts. And it's all about understanding all these things. It's about understanding when to use heights, The when you most of the time you probably shouldn't. But uh, I do look at some examples of how you can uh, the different types of widths using max widths and lots of other really handy things. It's a 21 day drip course. So it does take you 21 days. We go through how to think responsively. We get into Flexbox and we finish the whole thing off with media queries. And by the end, you should be able to build a pretty nice layout that you can see on the screen right now. So if that sounds interesting to you, the link for it is right down below in the description. You can sign up for that. Again, it's completely free. will always be free. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to all my patrons for helping support everything I do here on my channel every single month. You guys are absolutely amazing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.